For this video, the subject we're looking at today is cancer. Now, cancer's got different names. Some people call it uh, malignant disease or neoplastic disease, but it all amounts to the same thing. And uh, in many countries of the world, certainly in the Western world here, about 20 to 25% of deaths are due to cancers of various sorts, so there are many sorts, as we'll see. But although there are many sorts, basically, there's only one thing goes wrong, and that is that cells start dividing in an out-of-control way. Cancer, you could define as uh, out-of-control cell growth. You see, normally, the cells in your body are dividing. So, for example, the cells inside your cheek, some get worn off when you have your lunch, and then uh, cell division takes place, and it replaces the damaged tissue. The reason your hair grows is because of cell division. And cell division in most tissues of the body is, is taking place regularly to replace tissues which are destroyed by wear and tear. But in cancer, those cells divide, but then when they're divided enough, they don't stop dividing, they keep on dividing. So you get lots and lots of cells all dividing. And the result is, if you think about it, is you get a new tissue, a neoplasm, a new tissue. And very often, you get a lump. This is what's called a tumour. So out of control, cell division, a proliferation of cells resulting in a tumour. So excessive multiplication of cells in part of the body. Common to um, all types of cancer. The result is a tumour. The term tumour literally means a lump. It's a new growth. Or neo means new. Plasm means tissue. New tissue. But of course, as we're going to see, it is very abnormal, very pathological tissue. Here, for example, is a tumour, a particularly large, horrible tumour. Um, in fact, just to orientate you here, the, the patient's lying prone on his tummy. It's his tummy, that's his back. You can see the arm here. And all this is, is a massive malignant tumour, um, horrible tumour. But it is caused by excessive out-of-growth, sorry, excessive out-of-control cell division. The reason this tumour is here is because cells have, have, have divided and kept on dividing and not stopped dividing, and the result is this horrible fungating uh, tumour. This is another example of a malignant tumour. This is actually uh, a breast which has been removed for palliative reasons. And uh, you can see here the destructive nature of, of the tumour. The, the nipple, for example, is completely destroyed. You can see the extreme uh, skin puckering here due to the tumour underneath. Uh, the, 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 this breast was just full of uh, malignant tumour and was removed because, as you see, the, the tumour is actually coming out of the surface of the body. It's, it's referred to as fungation, uh, fungating malignant uh, breast tumour. But the basic pathology is the same. The tumour is caused by multiplication of cells to a pathological level. Excess, out of control, multiplication of cells. Now we saw two types of tumour there, but you've probably heard of lots of different types of cancer. People talk about breast cancer or colonic cancer or stomach cancer or cervical cancer, whatever sort of cancer they're talking about. And what, what this really refers to is where the cancer started. So, for example, breast cancer starts in the breast. Prostatic cancer starts in, in the prostate gland. It describes the, the, the origin of the cancer. So, the origin, the place where the cancer starts, we refer to as the primary site. So, a cancer starts, say, in the lung, a bronchogenic cancer. That's where it starts. But from there, it can spread all around the body. In fact, this is the nature of cancer. Cancer spreads. 
So you have tumour cells that start in one part of the body, but they, they then spread to the other parts of the body. And what you end up with is tumour cells growing all over the body. And this is why the patients are usually the cause of death. The tumour cells spread all over the body. So in other words, in cancer you have primary sites where the tumour started, but then you have secondary sites that the tumour spreads to, and you end up with cancer everywhere. So ha having managed uh, patients in the terminal stages of cancer, um, but very often, I in your nursing of these patients, it doesn't really matter too much in the later stages where the tumour started, because you're dealing with a patient who has cancer all over the place, and, and the management is very similar in many cases. Um, so primary sites where the tumour starts, secondary sites where the tumour spreads to. So some sites, some tissues give rise to cancers more commonly than others. Actually having put the kidney there, it's not one of the most common, but it can, you can get primary tumours over the kidney, but certainly the prostate gland, breast, gastrointestinal tract cervix and ovary but as I say any tissue uh, well not any tissue but m many tissues can be primary sites for tumours so we've mentioned that malignant cancerous cells can spread around the body how do they spread around the body is the next obvious question so here we're considering a tumour which has begun uh, as a primary site in the lung. And this mass here is a primary lung tumour. The tumour has started in the lung tissue. Normally it starts incidentally in the lining of the bronchioles, a bronchogenic uh, carcinoma. Well one thing is that this tumour will spread directly into the local tissues. This is referred to as local invasion it will spread into the tissues roundabout, direct spread. But as well as that, parts of the tumour will break off and malignant cells will float away in the bloodstream. And these can then go to other parts of the body, or go back to the heart, and could go to other parts of the body. So spread in the bloodstream is a possibility. Then if you think as well as blood drainage of an area of tissue, there's also lymphatic drainage of an area of tissue. And that's what this one represents. So cells from the malignant site can break off the tumour and float away in the lymphatic system. First of all, they'll go to the lymph nodes that drain that area, and malignant tumours will start growing in the lymph nodes as well. So spread through lymphatic drainage. But as well as that, tumours can spread through body cavities. So you can see that there's actually a direct communication between here and here through the bronchioles, in this case, because it's a lung. So the tumour can also spread along the lining and through the tissue of the bronchial passages. And as well as that, of course, the lung is surrounded by pleura, and each lung has is, is, is got one continuous potential pleural space all the way around it. So once some tumour cells break into the pleura, they can spread potentially all around the pleural space. So malignancies can spread round about the pleura, round about the body cavity. And as we mentioned before, the spread in the blood, and this can take... Uh, metastases off to anywhere really because this is going back uh, to, the, to the heart and uh, it, it, the metastases can go into any part of the body in the bloodstream, brain, liver or, or the bones. So primary site, tumour from there can spread to secondary sites via local invasion, bloodstream spread lymphatic spread or through anatomical body uh, cavities. For example, in the lung, 
the bronchus or the pleura.